Supersonic Wednesday, I call it. It is the first Wednesday in the month of August 2021. Thank you very much for joining us this morning on the platform, the pinnacle of all discussions right here on Flow 94.9 FM. This is the flow of God's own state. Of course, this is a discussion seg segment of our morning spies, the one we call... Uh, of course, uh, way back Wednesdays because of the color of the day anyways. Uh, and uh, on the pinnacle of all discussions today, I will be branching uh, so many destinations. Uh, first, talk about COVID-19, then return to politics. Why is COVID-19 very important at this point? Nigeria is currently battling with the second wave of this virus. Okay, in case you do not know, Nigeria has officially entered the third wave of COVID-19. Somebody will say Michael is back again. We have to be very important that uh, we have to be very careful at this point in time. One of the reasons I'm bringing this topic uh, up front this morning to talk about it, what you should know about Delta variant. Uh, the federal government, in fact, on Monday received uh, some doses of uh, COVID-19 vaccines, the Moderna vaccine. And of course, the country is already uh, seeing the third wave of the COVID-19 pandemic as the cases of the Delta variant are increasing in several states. Uh, Dr. Osage Ehanire, the country's uh, Minister of Health, said there has been this uh, sharp increase in the number of confirmed COVID-19 cases since the month of July as the global anxiety over the Delta variant spreads. Anyways, joining me this morning on the platform, the pinnacle of all discussions, to discuss the Delta COVID-19 variant, what we should know, and also how we can avoid contracting COVID-19, especially on the streets of Abia State. Dr. Tina Gozie Adindu, the uh, Executive Secretary of the Abia State Primary Healthcare Development Agency. Doctor, glad to have you join us. Good morning to you. Good morning. Welcome to the platform on Flow 94.9 FM. Oh, thank you. Uh, at a point in time, it looks like uh, we were done with COVID-19. We didn't hear much. But recently, it is making headlines across board that Nigeria is uh, recording increases in the number of cases. Uh, of course, uh, daily uh, uh, numbers being recorded by the NCDC. Uh, what about this? Uh, we sh should we be worried? Oh, well, thank you very much. Um, we actually did our best in combating the disease at uh, the earlier stage, you know, as a state. We did all that we should to educate the members of the public. Uh, we had a uh, refreshingly lucid COVID-19 protocols and people were compelled uh, to obey those protocols. Um, the lockdown uh, you know, uh, everything we did, in fact, actually assisted. Mm. And then, of course, vaccination. But you know one thing about this uh, virus? Uh, you know, viruses are very uh, special kind of uh, pathogenic organism. They try to change, you know, what we call mutation. And uh, they may decide to be more virulent, more uh, destructive when that occurs. Uh, we have the second wave and presently we now have the third wave of the pandemic and this one is called the Delta, Delta uh, strain. Um, yeah, we have to be worried, honestly, uh, because one nasty thing about this particular variant is that uh, it is asymptomatic. That means you don't even uh, experience the signs and symptoms inherent in the first two uh, strains that we experienced. So somebody can, uh, you know, be going about not knowing that he has contracted this, this disease and in a couple mm. of uh, days or thereabout, the person is gone. So that is why we should be worried. You know? Now, you say uh, the symptoms uh, cannot be seen, asymptomatic. Yeah. Then why yes. should we be, be, be worried? Because a common man on the street will say, what I didn't, I do not know about will not kill me. Then I should just go about my business. Uh, well, that wouldn't stop the virus from spreading. Uh, the fact remains that uh, we should be watchful. Uh, just like the first one, the first uh, two strains that came, mm. you will experience, uh, have the symptoms, you know, lack of uh, 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 tests, you know, smell, then you cough, you have fever, you have all that. But in this particular one, it may not be so pronounced. That's the problem. So I think the, the solution is for us to uh, be properly protected, maybe receive the vaccine uh, so that uh, we'll be 
properly protected against okay. it's what it is moving should be should she uh, is the new uh, variant the, the delta variants the delta strain you mentioned uh, spreading across the globe now including nigeria is it more deadlier than the uh, one the uh, the initial one that was well known across the country oh yes 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 it is in a couple of days uh, someone is gone uh, yeah this one is uh, more acute so that is more why acute. We have... so it is uh, yes. uh, more deadly than um, yes, the first well, two strikes. Just, so uh, maybe you should run us through some of those uh, procedures that uh, we should and some of those protocols uh, that we should uh, uh, follow to ensure that we stay away from contracting COVID-19, the Delta variant especially. Uh, well, just like the first two, it spreads uh, through droplets. And uh, we've been advising our people, one, they should always wear their face masks. Uh, secondly, they should wash their hands. Uh, they should avoid touching the nose, the mouth, the ear, you know, even the eyes. Uh, so we equally insist that people should uh, refrain from hugging and if possible, avoid crowded places. Uh, social distancing is still uh, important at this stage. Uh, so that is why uh, it is very imperative that all the protocols we are observing uh, should equally continue. And then in addition, should uh, present themselves for test once in a while there's something wrong if you have a slight feeling it may not be as you know pronounced mm. the other one, uh, just go and uh, be tested you know there are so many uh, centers now we have uh, places where people can go and uh, okay. have the test uh, dr adindu maybe you should run us through the vaccination process in abia state how far has the state gone in terms of uh, vaccination and also how are the people responding abia residents how are they responding to vaccination in the state uh, yeah uh, thank you very much that's a very silent question uh, well i'll be honest we experience uh, vaccine hesitancy uh, people were scared uh, but then um luckily for us we have uh, all that is required we have a very robust coaching equipment uh, we received uh, the logistics support from the governor and then um, we equally have a pool of enthusiastic health workers and of course the intricacies and dynamics of handling issues of vaccination are within the competence of the academic and professional background so our staff the primary health care workers were all over the place and we had too many you know vaccination points mm. so i don't say we experience that um, hesitancy but as a result of um uh what i would call aggressive media involvement uh your station the station actually assisted us bca vision africa uh, they helped us to educate the members of the public and uh, we equally had town hall meetings we used town announcers we went into the field and had interaction with our people and then another thing that added a boost was the role of his excellency the governor of the state dr kizi so the moment he came in you remember the vaccines came to this state on the 10th day of march and the following day 11th he didn't even waste time he said please bring that vaccine i want to receive my job you know so with that kind of uh, leadership he demonstrated yeah. and so long as stakeholders and so many other people you know follow suit so it helped you know to douse the tension and it, it, it removed the fears a lot of people now came forth and that was why we were able to record a huge success despite the delay you know okay. uh, so at the time we we finished uh, the vaccination exercise because uh, they uh, the ones they gave us you know was to expire on the ninth day of july I, i'm telling you before the fifth we've already exhausted the 61,000 doses given to abia state so a lot of people we are coming even to, even as presently people are still coming I want to receive the job. I want to receive the job. No, oh, interesting. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Chinago Zeadindu. I want to really appreciate you for bringing uh, for bringing us up to speed uh, concerning vaccination and also the Delta variant, uh, especially in Abia State. Thank you very much. You're welcome. All right, uh, that's uh, Dr. Chinna Goziadindu, Executive Secretary of uh, Abia State Primary Healthcare Agency. I'm still going to talk to some person concerning the delta variant the rise in covid 19 cases in the country uh, just uh, so you should know uh, rising cases of delta variant of covid 19 are seen in lagos 
in Akwa Ibom State, in Oyo State, in Riva State, Kano State, Plateau State, and Abuja. That was revealed, that was on Monday by Dr. Osage Ehanire, the Minister of Health in the country. And the doctor said the country has been recording a sharp increase in the number of uh, number of uh, confirmed COVID-19 cases since July as global anxiety over the Delta variant spreads. Well, all treatment centers have been put on alert to receive cases, especially in the face of the threat of the third wave. And of course, Nigeria has recorded a total of uh, 174,315 COVID-19 cases uh, from the 2,542,261 samples tested. A good one anyway and was if you ask me that's a a far cry from what we have uh, in other countries uh, where this virus is spreading very fast with uh, 7151 active cases and uh, 2149 deaths recorded unfortunately fatalities recorded in the country joining me this morning on the conversation concerning covid 19 is uh, Dr. Carol Liwoha. Dr. Carol is a former chairperson of the Nigerian Medical Association in Abia State. Doctor, good morning to you. Welcome. Good morning, Michael. I, I know you will be wondering, Michael is back again concerning COVID-19 on radio. Is there, was, there a, <laughs> was there a time we stopped talking about COVID-19? It looks like uh, uh, the agitation is on concerning the spread and uh, the rise uh, in the number of cases recorded in the country well we stopped we didn't quite stop talking but um, emphasis decreased with the end of the second wave of COVID-19 so we were hardly reporting cases across the country testing also went down and people were almost returning back to their normal lives the mass went on vacation and um, the likes but um, in the couple in the past couple of weeks we have seen rising cases mm-hmm. and then um, before we started seeing them in nigeria it has started in countries like the u.s like britain and we already had uh, started hearing about lockdowns outside the country and like we have always said covid is uh, transmitted by from person to person so as long as there is an um, international travel between those countries and Nigeria, the likelihood that we will get cases is just high. So as expectedly, that has been the trend. We now have reports of cases or more cases in Nigeria, more people falling ill, requiring admission, and even deaths have been recorded. So that's the evidence that we have a third wave already in the country. Uh, doctor, isn't it uh, worrisome that the attention we paid to oh, the virus during the second wave of the uh, 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 spread of this virus in Nigeria has dwindled compared to what we have now, now that we even have a deadlier uh, 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 variant of the virus talking about uh, Delta variant, Delta strain? Well- you know when you talk about response uh, public health response you know a lot of factors come into play including funding with the second wave came a lot of um or at the, by the end of second phase a lot of funds for programs on covid had been depleted attention began uh, with her shifting attention towards other illnesses that are also ravaging us and giving us cause for concern. Things like immunization that went down, that that increasing sensitization on immunizations mm. and likes. So it's um, expected that um, the trend, however, the watch has remained with regards to travel because anybody that is traveling outside the country, anybody that is coming in still requires a certificate to show that you are COVID free. So those checks at points of entry have made, despite the fact that um, internal checks, local checks have declined. Okay. So do you think we are prepared to fight this strain, the variant? Well, one thing that is going for us is the fact that just like the other waves, we have had less cases uh, than uh, other nations. In terms of preparation, it's just a matter of, we already have the plans on ground. Okay. So it's just a matter of activating the process, activating more testing, 
activating more vigilance, more screenings, and then, of course, preparing to care for those that may fall ill. So the structure is already on ground. It's just a matter of activating it. Okay, doctor, just before I let you go this morning, it looks like we've talked so much on the uh, on what the authorities should do, talking about activating the process again. Uh, let's yeah. look at the angle of the people. What should they do? We've thrown away uh, the use of face masks and other non-pharmaceutical pr protocols and procedures uh, put out during the uh, uh, during the uh, uh, second wave and the first wave of the virus. Uh, what should we do? Are we to continue with those protocols? Or are there sure, new we ways should. of... We, we sh yes, yes we it. should. We should because if they worked for us, then we can do it again. We can... Yesterday, uh, a group of doctors, the female doctors, Medical Women Association, were at an outreach and they, they still donated wash hand buckets to a health facility. Just to create that awareness that we should start washing our hands with soap and water. We, we, we shouldn't have stopped anyway. And then, of course, start using our masks when we're in crowded places. So those things that have worked for us for as individuals. So when I talk about activating the process, it's not just a government thing. As individuals, we should also activate our concerns and our personal uh, contributions to preventing the disease. Since the mode of spread of this new variant is not different from the uh, previous variant. It's just that the report says it is more contagious. That is, it's more, uh, you're more likely to get infected if you come in contact with somebody that has it. That's the difference. So I think um, if we do the things we've done before that work for us, then we're going to also succeed. All right. Thank you very much, Dr. Karoli Waha, for joining us this morning. Yes, on yes. The before I go off, yes. let me also emphasize on the issue of vaccination. Okay. That um, reports have shown that those who uh, have re received the COVID vaccine, even if they got infected, had less severe illnesses. So it, it lays emphasis on the fact that vaccines are available in several health facilities across the state and people should make use of it and get protected. Interesting. And uh, the side effects also, some persons are not uh, presenting themselves for vaccination due to uh, some side effects and some uh, fallacy on social media. Let me put it that yes, way. Yes, I think the fallacy, the fallacy is more, the fallacy is more than the evidence-based um, complaints. Mm, all right. Uh, Dr. Karoli Woha, I want to really appreciate you this morning on the platform on Flow FM. Thank you very much for joining us. Yeah. Always my pleasure. Thank You're welcome. You. All right. Uh, yes, you heard uh, from both uh, medical practitioners, of course, this morning on the platform. It is very important that uh, uh, we rise up to uh, defeating the third wave of the COVID-19.